Shalom, sister, tag the stick. My stick. They don't know that it's for the man. For the man. The last week, they didn't know that it was for the man. Right now. They thought they just did it. Just like to hold the stick. Laser light. Laser light, no stick. Huh? Laser light, no stick. Who has a razor and a laser, whatever? No Star Wars here. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Tonight إن شاء الله This will be the third lecture in this series الأندلس The Forgotten History And we spoke last time about the introduction of Islam into Al-Andalus and how Musa ibn Musayr rahimahullah and Tariq ibn Ziyad rahimahullah and uh, Muslims were able to conquer Al-Andalus that part of the world eh, the uh, peninsula and what's known today as Spain and Portugal in a period of four years between 92 Hijri to 96, the Muslims were able to uh, take over the whole peninsula except that uh, Sakhra, that area that we said uh, will have a big role in the future of Al Andalus. That era, those four years, we gave it a name. We call it Ahd al Okay? The era of Kang. The era of Kang. Now, the next part of the history of Islam in Al Andalus will be called Ahd al Wula. Ahd al Wula. Al Wula, governors. Plural of Wali, that is governors. And those, or this, period called the As or Ahd al -Wula because these governors will be assigned by the Khalifa okay, by the Khalifa the Khalifa al-Umawi alright, so whoever we're gonna talk about today very much until the end will be governors assigned given delegation to be in charge of Al-Andalus huh? by the Khalifa of Islam of Al-Khilafa al-Umawiyya in Dimash. This era will be well extend from 96 Hijri to 138 Hijri. Okay? So as you see, it extends until the end of the Khilafah al umawiyyah and six years or seven years into the Khilafah al abbasi Okay? Into the Abbasi dynasty. So about 42 years, this period will be Ahd al -Wula. 42 years. Khulafa, as we said last time, Al-Walid ibn Abd al-Malik called over Tariq ibn Ziyad and Musa ibn Nusayr while they were trying to conquer Sakhra. Huh? And Sakhra, where is my stick? Huh? Hmm? You have, do you have a stick in the back there? Or in the front? We got a map for nothing? We need to stick. All right. These iPhones don't have laser thing pointer. Well, the mother will give it to one of the flower and start giving a stick again. Bring a real stick, not like two inches thing. Pen. 
Make me. It's not a problem. <laughs> toothpick. Daily toothpick. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's all right. Uh, so, uh, we said that when Musa ibn Nusayr and Tariq ibn Ziyad, rahimahullah, Allah, 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 Allah,
periods. The first part of this was all jihad. Yeah, in other words, they know. When you raise them in the message. So what happened? <coughs> they did not stop. Mashallah, Allah Allah, that's good news. Alhamdulillah. That's good news. Very uh, inspiring. So the, the first era, they knew that they could not stop. That you have, now you are here, separate from the rest of the Muslim world, separate from any support. And you got yourself in here, and then the rest of Europe against you. So if we stop, we are power. If we stop, eventually they're going to come and get us. Okay? There is the Pope, there's the Christians, there's the uh, Europe, and uh, they're going to come and get revenge. And there's the Sahra, uh, that I will keep pointing to the Sahra until we get to know what it's all ever. So al Fatra al all of it was jihad. That's why we have 22 governors in this 42 years. In those 42 years, 22 governors, many should have. The governors were getting martyred. Huh? They will go and fight and get martyred and killed. Some of those, I will mention some of those, some of those great governors in this first period. Okay? Some people that we should know about. One with the name of Samh ibn Malik al Khawalan. That is a very important name. Samh. Ibn Malik al Khawal, you will see in this period how went from one extreme to the other extreme. The governor. Huh? One of them, Al Samh ibn Malik al Khawalani. Umar bin Abdul Aziz put him the governor. He was the governor in the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. We you know Umar bin Abdul Aziz was the Khalifa from 99 Hijri until 102. Less than three years, okay? He was the Khalifa for two years and six months, Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And if you look in his seerah, and if you look what he did, yeah, to the point where he's described as the fifth Khalifa. Khalifa Khulafa al-Rashidin, you know, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. From his greatness and his justice and how he was able to, Allah Azza wa Jal, huh, put the acceptance in his hand, they consider him the fifth Khalifa. And he's the grandchild of Umar bin Khattab, the mother said. So, the first thing he did, now this is Islam. So, Sam went to France. Okay? First thing he started, he started the jihad in France. France. He went all the way until he conquered few states in France. And he uh, established a state. That state huh, in the southeast of France on the Mediterranean. Huh, and he called it Septimania. Okay? In the capital, Arbona. Huh? Arbona. Hmm? So in this area, this whole thing and more, a little more. Huh? This became ruled by Sharia. Part of France. Okay? So in this area, this is the Mediterranean. In this whole area, hmm, that become Septimani. Hmm? Known as a state. Okay? A country by itself. And the capital, as we said, Arabona. <coughs> Arabona on the, on the ocean here. Or on the sea. <clears throat> this area known more people familiar more with it as well. Huh? The French Riviera. The French Riviera. So Muslims today go to the French Riviera hmm? to rule by Sharia. To talk about Islam to make down. Huh? No? Hmm? No. Muslims go there to huh? throw their money. Masajid? Masajid. Corruption, of course. Hmm? But this is a big area. Yani when some of the cities in there can 
Monaco, uh, Marsilia, Nice, Toulon, all this in that area. Okay? So that was ruled by Sharia for many, many years. That part, the French Riviera. <coughs> Samih ibn Malik, rahimahullah, stushid mi'awthinim, hijr. Okay? So he didn't rule for long. He was martyred in one of the battles in year 102. Hmm? He was put there, maybe 99 or 100. So he very much ruled for a couple of years. But he reached with Islam that far. Okay? After his Samih comes another man. It's the name of Anbasa ibn Suhaim Kalbi. Anbasa was followed the footsteps of Samih. And he continued his uh, expansion and conquering the land to bring the people the deen of Allah. To bring the people the deen of Allah as a wajid. He ruled from 103 to 107. Four years. Hmm? Some people think you have to rule for 30, 40, 50 years to change. Four years. 103 to 107. He continued huh, conquering in France until he reached a city called Sens. Sens. Hmm? Who lived in France? You know where Sens? Makes sense? He reached a huh, place called Sens. This city is 30 kilometers away from Paris. 30 kilometers. That's less than huh, about 20 miles from France. In his time, Muslims conquered 70% of France. 70% of France huh, ruled by the Sharia. 70%. Hmm? In the time of Anbas. <coughs> he got martyred in 107. Alright? At that moment, things started changing. Things started changing. After Anbasa, some governors took over. One of them, Al Haytham Al Kalbi. And Al Haytham Al Kalbi was a متعصب لقومي. Okay, he was a racist. Okay, toward his own people, hmm? to his tribe and his own people. So he started creating problems between the Arabs and the Amazigh, or the Baro. Okay? So, because he's Arab, and he's uh, fanatic for his own people, start creating problems between the indigenous people hmm, and uh, the Arabs. So that started creating issues in the in Andalus. To the point where some battles took place between the Arabs on one side, the Muslim Arabs, and the Muslim Bar. And we're talking, huh, just less than 10 years, 10 years from the conquer of land. Okay, talking about from 96 when, we, when they finished, and now we're 107. 10 years, and now Muslims getting divided. Hmm? Every time, the Muslims shift for a moment away from the deen of Allah. That's what happened. And the enemies of Islam know that very well and capitalize on that, as we will see. So, then after that, alhamdulillah, this period didn't last long. Allah Azza wa Jal sent someone. Hmm? This Tarikh uh, al-Andalus huh, is like emergency room. Someone comes with a heart attack, is not breathing, huh? no pulse, whatever, and CPR is back. So every time you think that we're done, Allah Azza wa Jal sends someone to revive. Hmm? When you feel that there is no hope, Allah Azza wa Jal sends someone huh, or a miracle huh, to bring back the power to the Muslims. So when it reaches the, it reaches the point where Muslims now fighting each other, because of their ethnicity, Allah Azza wa Jal sent someone with the name of Abd al-Rahman al-Ghafiqi. Abd al-Rahman al-Ghafiqi. And this is very great 
Mm. One of the things he did, he got rid of this huh? uh, racism. He fought it so hard. He educated the people. Huh? He started spreading the teaching of Islam amongst the people. He encouraged the people back, revived the Sunnah of the Jihad. The Sunnah of the Jihad in Andalus, he revived it back when people got busy fighting each other. Isn't it? When you're busy fighting each other, you forget about other obligations. So, Alhamdulillah, we have two periods, as I said. One, the first period, huh, is conquering and bringing Islam and spreading Islam. And this went for 27 years. From 96 until 127. Even though in between there was some huh, uh, corruption, but overall, this period was huh, prosperous. The second part, huh, which is, was a period huh, of weakness and plots and revolutions, corruption, and that lasted for 15 years. Lasted for 15 years. So now we're talking about the period of the first 27 years. Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqin, and this first period especially, had special things that happening during this time. First, that you conquered Al Andalus in four years. So now the focus on teaching the people Islam. Folks, you're talking about people, Christians. You're talking about people of no religion. Huh? You're talking about people who are ignorant. So four years we conquered them, now we're going to spread Islam. We're going to teach the people Islam. And this is a way that works anywhere. We will see that it worked everywhere. Hmm? It doesn't matter who the people are. This religion is the religion of the truth. If it's being presented right, hmm, it will attract people. Well, also you have to remember, at those times, there wasn't this war of propaganda huh, on Islam. But at the same time, hmm, even though there is a war of propaganda on Islam, well, we have a counter war. The way they have uh, access to uh, technology, we have access to technology. Maybe we don't have as much power as they do, huh? but we can make a difference. We can change. And yani, the brothers texted me about those billboards, why Islam, and today I saw one actually, and Muhammad, what's coming between Muhammad and Jesus and Ibrahim alayhi salam and al sunnah Well, these are a great thing. Hmm? Even though I'm personal, in my personal opinion, I don't get very excited <coughs> about this stuff, but it's a great thing. Everyone is doing what he believes to be good. Huh? For me, my idea is this. We have an offer for many, many more billboards with zero fees. We don't have to pay. Zero. Those billboards cost a lot of money. Huh? With zero. Every Muslim can be a billboard. That's what I believe. Every Muslim needs to live, if he lives, if each one of us would live as a Muslim and abide by Islam, we will be a free billboard. Hmm? Symbolically, yeah. That's what will attract people to come forward and ask. Hmm? A lot of us, we're Muslims. Huh? No one knows we are. Yeah. Even those amongst us who look Muslims, He's walking huh, with a frown in his face, and yeah, huh, uh, uh, as they say, Ya Arda Tarfu, Mahada Addi, Tarfu, huh? You know, no one talks to me. People get scared. People are already scared. So we have to be pleasant. So each one of us, in his workplace, huh, on the street, in his school, in his job, and uh, his university, huh, amongst his friends, can be inviting to the deen of Allah without talking. Okay? So very important to understand this fact. So they started teaching people Islam. Hmm? They started. Now Muslims have the power. They could come to the people of Al-Andalus and say, this is the deen. As we will see how the, huh, the Spanish people, and if, uh, the Spain, when they conquered the Muslims, the Christians, how they gave the ultimatum to the Muslims at the end of the uh, history of Islam. Muslims 
could have gone to those people, Christians in Andalus and people of no religion and told them, this is the day. You leave or you become Muslim. You leave or you become Muslims. Actually, the third option, you get killed. As the Christians did with Muslims at the end. Hmm? They told them, you either leave, you become Christian, or we kill you. And actually those who a lot left huh, to North Africa, a lot got killed. Those who became Christians continued to be oppressed, even with the name. They even were, they were given different name. The name of Moors. Yeah, he's second class Christian. And you're Christians, but you're not huh, pure blood Christian. Even though maybe those people, their ancestors were Christians who lived. So the Muslim uh, uh, with Abdul Rahman Ghafiqi rahimahullah started educating people about Islam. Okay? Started spreading Islam in the peninsula. Something they've never heard of. Huh? A way of life addresses all issues in life. We said, we, we talked about the conditions previously in the first lecture. The conditions of Europe before Islam. Hmm? What they were with, they did not even know about showering. They thought, huh? Uh, Jarab and uh, the dirt on their bodies was a blessing and health. They were showering once or twice a year. So Islam now coming with all this new stuff, they were never exposed to. And one of the main reasons they were never exposed to because that was the, the, the manhaj and the methodology of the church. If you keep people ignorant, you keep controlling them. That's why in in, in that era, in Europe, any scientist come out, they kill him. They'll burn him huh, in public squares, they'll kill him. Because it was threatening to the church. So all these things, as we will see, was supported by the church, by the Pope. Okay? So, within a small or a short period of time, El Andalus, huh, Spain and Portugal, completely converted to Islam. Complete. No one was forced to become Muslim. But when Islam was introduced, completely converted to Islam. That's why in Europe or in the West in general, here or there, they tell you make that one. Make that. But then am I that one? And that not a reason for me to stop or to discourage any of you. But my da'wah, and when I write an article, and there is a million article against my da'wah, eh? when I give a speech and there's a 10,000 or 100,000 speeches against me, it's really, it's gonna be, it's not going to be as effective. Okay? That's why you might say, why then we can't convert this country or today? Completely that. the mawazin, mushmutakafi. There's no balance in power. Okay? That we, we discussed this issue about those who come and say, well, these countries now open huh? the doors of uh, da'wah and teaching about, talking about Islam, and no start, no one starts. Well, still, the powers, huh? it's not balanced for my da'wah to be as effective for me to be able to reach, to reach people. So, within a short period, Al Andalus turned into Islam. And the people of Al Andalus, the indigenous people, became huh, the main soldiers of the armies of Islam. Hmm? Plus the barbar who came from North Africa and the Arabs who came all the way from the East. There's a new generation produced now. Wahada is Jeel al Muwalladin. Okay? Jeel al Muwalladin yani the the breed, new breed. Now you have a new breed of people. Where the father, eh, Barber or Arab, the mother, Andalusian. Hmm? The mother from the Andalus. So now you got a new generation where they're connected with the East and with the West. Okay? And that, <coughs> then, subhanAllah, hmm? that create power. Create power. Look at the mentality of Muslim, some Muslim countries today. The foreigner, the Muslim foreigner who is not from that country, come to that country. Okay? 
there is no way he will ever be able to become a citizen. Okay? Fine. We understand your argument. We're going to give everyone citizenship. That then, then foreigners will outnumber the indigenous. In some of those small uh, mimetic, as they call it. Then you have the person, the Muslim, uh, marrying someone from the people of this country. She uh, carries the citizenship of that country. He will never be granted that citizenship. The children will never be granted the citizenship. Right? Actually, in some countries, uh, the only time the children will become citizens if the father dies or get divorced. <coughs> yani, in other words, those children who are born there, to, their mother belongs to that land, could get deported any man. Could have no country any man. Okay? The other thing, I understand you might have a point of why you don't give citizenship to everyone. Well, you don't have to give it to everyone. But when you see someone genius, when you see someone with big brain, when you so see someone huh, who you can benefit, your country and your people, shouldn't you encourage to recruit him? Before, what happened to those minds and to those brains? They ended up going to those. Actually, they might be given citizenship before even they put a foot, step a foot in those countries. And look at the Muslims. Oh, well, you think Muslims aren't smart? Eh? They imagine we collect the scientists, eh, of, uh, the Muslim scientists in the world. Eh? They, they will make a country by themselves. We went to colleges and we went to universities and we saw who are the excellent students and the number one students and the, eh, the, the fa faculties and professors. There is no department in any university in America. And I say this, eh, might be exaggerating, but I don't think I will be far away without finding Muslim professors in there. No depart. You find them faculties, you find them deans, you find them this and that. Muslims, this ummah, huh, doesn't lack minds and brains, but it lacks being given the opportunity. There is a Muslim country, just last year, I was reading the article, this professor in Harvard, said he received this email. He thought it was a spam. But then one of his uh, uh, colleagues told him that he received the same email. And he applied and he got it. What is the whole thing? This Muslim country built a university. It wants to make it a very uh, uh, excellent advanced university. So one of the ways you attract people and you get reputation, if your faculties have reputation. People, huh, faculties from big universities in the world, if they're part of your university, that gives a big push to yours. So what they did, they were inviting those professors huh, to become <coughs> faculties. Doesn't have to work in the university just to put his name that he's affiliated with such university. He might need to spend one week in there, a year. And the salary is about $90,000. Okay? $90,000. Just spend a week vacation, but be on your resume, put your affiliate, so they can put on their website and in their information, their booklets, so-and-so from such-and-such such university, faculty with us. Okay? Allah understand. More maybe there's a big chance that this same professor eh, was taught at one point of his life by a Muslim. Hmm? And I did a story happened with someone I know personally. We went to school, to uh, dental school, and he was yani ahead of me. He was in his uh, special periodontist treating gum problems, implants, all these things. So he went back, he finished, and he went back to his country. No need to mention names. So he said he started his own practice, and he was an excellent doctor. Excellent. Hmm? 
better than an, any non-Muslim in that school. So I'm talking to him. He said, Amira, hmm? princess, one of the daughters of whatever, and they call him kings or whatever, huh? came to his clinic. Her tooth broke. Okay? To be saved, needs a small surgery. Hmm? This surgery, literally, and I'm not a specialist, it doesn't take me more than five minutes. And I can do it even if I'm drunk. Okay? Too much tea. So the point, and it's very simple procedure. But it's called surgery. Because there is cutting and there's blood. So when he told her that, she said, and he's from that country, she said, I will never let you do surgery on me. She flew to New York. She did the surgery and went back. Hmm? And I tell you, hmm? Very few you will find as good as me. Well, uh, from their own. Hmm? So imagine that your funeral doctor, uh, imagine me going there to work and she walks in. Oh, well, mashallah, yani his beard is bigger than mine. That's so uh, from the belly. Hmm? Actually, it looks like he got so offended or something, it got into his head. So a few months later, he calls me. He says, listen, I'm opening a big center, like his partner with some doctors, and they're going to open a huh, uh, like small hospital. So they want doctors, <coughs> dentists, and specialists. I said, okay. Yeah, he's asking me if I know anyone. I said, send me the information. I might be interested. He said, no, no, no. We want them blind. <laughs> Allah. We want them blind. I said, I'll dye my hair. <laughs> you know? Sad. Sad. Hmm? That's where the Muslims are. That's where the Muslims are. And we think huh, what will change that is having a new boss, a new president. Khabath, do, inside. That leader is one. Yes, he has influence. There's a lot of khabath within the people, amongst the people. That needs to be cleaned. Needs to be cleaned. Okay? So the people, our heroes in the past, understood that very well. They understood that very well. So they focused on the people. They focused teaching the people the right things, the right deen. Okay? So they were successful to turn the whole Andalus into Islam. Okay? And those, the new breed, now they belong to that land and they belong to the Islam. Hmm? So there is no feeling that we're foreigners anymore. So they're going to fight and they're going to strive and they're going to sacrifice for their own deen and their own people. They started getting rid of racism, huh? of this caste system where you're Arab and you're Barber and you're Andalusi and you're... Huh? They got rid of all that. They started buying these churches. Very expensive, very too much money, very high prices. And turn it into masajid. They never came to a church and they said, get out. Hmm? They were buying them. And anyway, if you got a lot of people converting, then these churches don't have as much customers, as much clients, huh? as many clients. So they had to shut down. And this is what's happening even, continue to happen today. They focused on architecture. They focused on building huh? masajid. They focused on building uh, bridges, qanatir, huh? kabari. Hmm? Not kabari, yeah. hmm? <laughs> huh? Bridges, all these castles, fortresses. They put too much money into that. And that's how you write. You don't focus, huh? Islam, we want an Islam, we want the state, Muslim state, and all we worried about, huh? Teaching people only Quran and uh, Sunnah, and we sit in the masajid praying all day. Islam is a balanced religion. 
that is the foundation and that foundation encourage you to advance in everything you cannot become independent as long as you need to import your food from your enemy you cannot you cannot become a power as long as you need to import your weapons from your enemy hmm? very important they built factories for weapons they built factories for ships huh? all that horses very important the Spanish people uh, the indigenous people who did not convert started imitating the Muslims you read the Jews and the Christians were bragging that they're teaching Arabics in their churches and synagogues hmm? so those who did not convert to Islam and this is the leave that no one was forced but those who continued to stay on their religion were bragging that they're offering Arabic classes in their churches and singing. And that's what happens. Usually the defeated nations imitate the powerful ones. Huh? Powerful ones. Look what they imitated the Muslims with. And Malio, we imitate them huh? with clothes, with haircuts, huh? with slang, hmm? with pants dropping to the knees. That's how we imitate. Hmm? Allah understand. Qurtuba, because it was close, huh? You know. Qurtuba, uh, right? Because it was close to the uh, North Africa. Muslims are here. They made it the capital. Okay? Made it the capital and the center of. Uh, Islam. Add to that, the jihad continued in France. So all that in the time of Abdul Rahman al Ghafiq. Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi uh, continued his jihad in Spain, in France. In France, they went so deep. They went so deep, and they conquered many states. Uh, they conquered all. Bordeaux, Toulouse, in Arabic, Palusha, Tours, huh? and they reached the Poitiers. Okay? Poitiers is 170 miles from Paris. A thousand kilometers, 700 miles from Kurt. Okay? So that's how far they reached. Now, conquering through they were overloaded with the banana, with the bodies of war. Overloaded with the dunya. Even their ones, huh? uh, an opinion circulating amongst the armies that we should go all the way back to Qurtuba, to drop off all these banana and go back. And they're 70 miles from Paris. Usually, a country collapse if the capital drops. Okay? But Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi was with the opinion that we came huh, for the sake of Allah. We came to bring people out of the darkness to the light. All these things huh, we can get rid of shouldn't delay us. But Allah Azza wa Jal has His own plan. In this region, Tours, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's not in the in the picture, but it's a little bit more north. The Huate, huh? This is also called Tours. There was a palace, an old palace, Qasr. Qasr is Mubalat. Okay, there was an old palace. So in that region, huh? The French armies come and a battle takes place between the Muslims and the French in that region. So Balat wa Qasr in the Al-Andalus. The Jaysh al-Islami, the Muslims were 50,000. 50,000, the army of Muslims was 50,000. The Muslim armies never reached that number before. 50,000. It's 
a huge number. Okay? But again, one of the issues, huh? the money, the dunya. Second issue, the division of those, the distribution of those bodies of work. Even though in our Sharia, we have huh, rules how to, to distribute. But starting the fitna, and that's when the dunya comes, started the fitna amongst the soldiers, huh? again, based on race. Oh, we're the indigenous, you're foreigners, you shouldn't get as much as I get. This thing, so it created division in the hearts. So the hearts attached to the dunya, and now the hearts are divided amongst each other. One of the problems, they admire their number. As I said, they never reached this big number, 50,000. So they admired how many they, they were. And this reminds us of Hunayn. The Muslims huh, were huge in number on the day of Hunayn. Huh? But they got in the first, in the beginning of the battle, when they admired their number and they said, Lan huzamul yawman qilla, that we will not be defeated today because of our number. They were defeated in the beginning of their battle. And I'm telling you, hmm? But it was the will of Allah that they were able to pick up themselves. So, Charles Martin, huh? uh, the French leader, comes with his armies, his French armies, to tour huh? this area or Balad, Shadda, Kwati. And uh, the Arabs call him Shar Qarla. Shar Qarla. Who oh, a Char Martel. Martel the metal, the hammer. Huh? And the Pope called him that. The Pope of France. Because he was huh, like a uh, metal, uh, like uh, hammer on the enemies. Hmm? So he comes with his armies, 400,000. 400,000 soldiers. So you got eight times your number. But again, Muslims huh, never care about the numbers. And we said in, uh, huh, when they came into uh, Landers, how many they were? 30. 100,000. A hundred thousand against a hundred thousand, twelve thousand. Okay, I, I, against a hundred thousand. Numbers were never problem. Three hundred with the Sahaba, with the Prophet, I said, against a thousand. Now, nah, numbers don't matter. Actually, you look in our history, as I said before, whenever we overnumbered the enemies or we were huge in number, huh? very rare Muslims overnumbered them. But when we were huge in numbers, we get. Because the reliance moves, shifts from being on Allah completely, now in the numbers. And we cannot be victorious with our numbers. Hmm? We're 1.5 billion. How much are we worth in the world? Seriously. And we're ummah created for the deen. I don't care whoever wants to say otherwise. Huh? This is the reality. And to bring me any re any era in our history where we were good, huh? not excellent, good, and we were away from the deen. Not it. Not it. So he came with four four hundred or four hundred thousand uh, soldiers, and a war or a battle took place for ten days. Battle took place for ten days. In the beginning, the Muslims were victorious. In the beginning of the battle, huh? and that was, as I said, 70 kilometers, 70 miles away from Paris. The Muslims were victorious in the beginning. Then the French army huh, realized what? Lebanon. They realized that all these things they collected from previous wars, the Muslims, the bodies of wars, the Ghanaim. So they said, Let's attack them. Forget about the arm. Let's attack their land. Hmm? 
and that's how the whole thing huh, flipped upside down. So now he's fighting for what? For the dunya. He wants to protect his renan. And again, without fighting for Allah, you lose. You're fighting to brag, you're fighting for monetary benefits, you're fighting huh, to gain reputation. Well, you will lose. The only time you win, when you fight for Allah. So that turned all the mawazin, huh? all the weight and the victory goes from the side of the Muslims to the side of the French. Okay, and this is the battle in the year 114. 114 Hijri. Okay, how many years after the conquer? After 92? 22 years. 22 years, huh? From the moment Muslims entered Spain, they reached Paris. Okay? This battle, known in Islamic history, huh? Balat Shuhada. The, ba the Battle of Poitiers, huh? or the Battle of Tours. Okay? Because of the vocation, it took place. Sumiyat Balat Shuhada. Balat, we said the palace. Huh? Balat, palace in the language of Al-Andalus. And uh, Shuhada, as you know. So Balat Shuhada, the palace of martyrs, because the huge number of Muslims who were killed. Huge number of Christians as well, but huge number of Muslims. يقول مؤرخون النصارى Christian historians لو هزم الفرنسيون في معركة البواتي لفتحت أوروبا جميعا ولدرس القرآن في جامعات أكسفورد وغيره. And the Christian historians say, if the French were defeated in the Battle of Poitiers, whole Europe would have been conquered by Muslims. And the Quran would have been taught in Oxford and other universities. Because French is the shield for the rest of Europe. Hmm? What's left? Well, after France, what's left? Okay, small countries. Italy. Okay, we will see the Muslims reach Italy. Okay? They reach North Italy and they rule that area by Sharia. Okay. The Muslims, and actually, uh, um, the Christian historians mention that as yani, Europe was lucky. But actually, uh, it was disaster in Europe that they stopped Islam from coming in. It was disaster for them in our measurements. Anyway, now the Muslim army, the, ha the, the norm is when an army gets defeated, the victorious army run after them. The French didn't do that. Okay, the French, they were satisfied with the victory and with what they got. So they did not go after what's left of the Muslim, of the Muslim armies. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ غَرَّ Allah has laws. Huh? Allah says, O oh, you who believe, O oh, people, the promise of Allah is true. So do not be deceived by the dunya. Do not be deceived by the dunya. وَيَقُولِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَوَاللَّهِ مَا الْفَقْرَ أَخْشَى عَلَيْهِ it's not poverty that I'm worried. I'm not worried that you're poor. He tells the Sahaba. Huh? It's not poverty I'm worried about. I'm worried that you become rich. I'm worried the dunya will open it in front of you. You get the treasures of the dunya. Then you start competing for the dunya the way those before you competed over it. Then it will destroy you the way it destroyed them. The way it destroyed them. Soon, law from the laws of Allah that do not change and do not side anyone. Not because they're Muslims, huh? the law is going to change. Those are fixed laws, do not change. And the Prophet says, Da'uha fa innaha muntina. Huh? Throw it away. Leave it away. Leave it out. It stings. And that is, he's referring to 
ها ها عصبية أو العنصرية and that you're better than me and I'm, or I'm better than you because you're not from this country and you're not from this region and from this language and this ethnicity ها huh? this discrimination the process I say leave it stings ويقول الله عز وجل إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم ها the best of you amongst and the side of Allah the most good taqwa so these ayat refer to the reasons of defeat the dunya division the hearts are divided ha? Ha? and to admire your own numbers hmm? to rely on your own numbers and not on Allah Azza Wajal it's been hundreds of years now 114, we're in huh? 1400 Hijri plus, you're talking about 1300 years later. And the enemies of Islam understand that very well. We forgot about them. But our enemies don't forget. They still capitalize on these issues with Muslims. Because they know standing against Muslims huh? with weapons, you cannot get anything out of them. They know that. Hmm? And the example huh, that I mentioned before, Algeria. Algeria got, was occupied by France huh, from 1830 until 1960. 62? 62. Hmm? 132 years. They understood well, we cannot defeat these people. These people are Muslims, holding weapons against them, they don't care. Their children will go in front of our tanks. They understand that about Muslims. They understood that we are people that, Akhirah, huh? we love the Akhirah the way they love the dunya. So the only way we can get into them is by studying the history and see how they were defeated. So they understood one of the main reasons of defeat, you can defeat the Muslims, is divide them. Divide them. Huh? So what they did? They divided the Muslim world into countries, as you know. Hmm? But that is not enough for them. Because they know one of those countries could defeat them. So they have to play the same game internally. <coughs> so they have to divide, to divide the Muslims from inside by creating that feeling of superiority, caste system. So how are they going to do that in North Africa, especially Algeria? Let's divide the Arabs and the Amazigh. Huh? The Arabs and the Amazigh. How are we going to play it? Hmm? We're going to instill in the minds of the Amazigh huh, that those Arabs are occupiers. They came and they took their land from them. Okay? So they start cherishing huh, these feelings. Of course, we're not saying all the Amazigh fell for the trip, but many did. Okay? As well as you find the same thing and they're using the Arabs in different regions. Well, we're talking about this specific region because it's connected with the Andalus. So they started infiltrating the Amazigh communities, al Barb, hmm? and remind them even to the point where they convince them huh? they come from European huh? ancestors. They come from European ancestors. And those Arabs huh? coming to take over. Hmm? So they start playing that game. Another thing they played, huh? uh, teaching, uh, creating this, the barbaria or the language, al uh, It's the uh, Mantuq. It's a spoken language, it's not written. So they started writing, teaching it as written using Latin alphabet, English letters. So now they connect them more to them, hmm? separate them. They found the Arabic language and Islam educations in the Amazigh areas. 
and they start introducing hmm, the French language. That's why a lot of people, huh, they master the French language in those Muslim countries. They don't know how to speak Arabic. Okay? They started teaching in 1967. Hmm? <clears throat> they established the first uh, academy to teach the Amaziri language. In 1998, they established the International Academy of Barber. Okay? Shuf the contradiction. In 99, 1999, a minister hmm, came to the president of France, Jacques Chirac. Hmm? He came to him, his name I think just Stan. He came to Jacques Chirac and he suggested, he's a pre, uh, minister, he suggested of introducing a new languages uh, into France. Yeah, and he, you know, if French is the first language, then we can introduce second language, third language. Like, like this country, you know, English first language, and then Spanish. Faqal hmm? Shirak himself said, of course he refused, but he said, إِنَّكَ تُرِيدُ بِهَذَا الْمَشْرُوعِ بَلْقَنَةْ فَرَنْسِ He tells him, you want to turn France with your suggestion into like the Balkans. Uh, the countries, you know, these regions, Bulgaria and Bosnia and Croatia, and how it's divided, they're all same race, but it's divided, hmm? Turkey and all that. So he tells him that you want to divide France. So what's haram in France? Halal in Arabia. Hmm? Same mentality, because they know you divide the people, huh? and that France supports with money. And the look what, now what's happening in Mali. Hmm? How those who took over huh, the, Islam, the Islamists, huh? they destroyed tombs. Tombs of people they claim or in Tunis. Actually it's Tunisia. Hmm? They burned places where people go to the graves and worship the graves and all that. Who is funding the rebuilding of those tombs? Al-Qubab, huh? Who's funding the rebuilding of those graves? France. France. So that should give you immediately a hint. There is no good in these things. Because there is no way. And they will do the same thing in man. Hmm? Keep people, huh? Worshipping these graves. Oh, what is drunk? He will never wake up. Okay? So anything against Islam, they're going to church and they're going to support. So very important to pay attention to that. Okay. So when the Muslims left Balat al Shuhada, uh, left uh, the Battle of Poitiers, and they ran back to Al Andalus, Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi got marked. Uh, Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi. Uqba ibn al Hajjaj al Saluli uh, took over. And this man was the governor from 116 to 123 Hijri. And he was uh, the last Mujahid and the last uh, person who really the last governor who was or who continued the movement of uh, spreading Islam and fighting the enemies of Islam in this, in this era. He was given the choice by the Khalifa. He was given the choice by the Khalifa to become the governor of North Africa, all of it, or Al Andalus. And he chose Al Andalus. And the reason he chose Al Andalus, he said because it's neighboring the Kuffar. It's neighboring the Kuffar. So the chance, huh, fighting is always there. That's history. He carried over seven uh, expeditions to France in seven years. On his own, huh, by himself, on his own. They will conquer and he will go down and talk to the people. On his hand, over 2,000 people came. On his hand, just by talking to them. Huh? Talking to them about Islam. That's what they were, that's what they were concerned about. Uh, the things he, he was able to conquer and add to the, to the Muslim uh, land was uh, Duvinay, St. Paul, 
uh, province of Burgundy. Uh, these are in France. And uh, there's a region called Piedmont. That's in North Italy. Right? <laughs> So he reached, he was able to uh, conquer North Italy. There's a big region of, uh, you know the shoes? Uh, Italy looks like a big boot shoe. On the top right there where the foot goes in. Uh, <laughs> uh, that land, that piece was conquered and became ruled by the Sharia. He, Rahimahullah, was martyred in year 123 again. And by his uh, death, the first period of Ahd al the era of governors, ended. Remember we said the bright period and the dark period. So by his death, the bright period ended. Then we come to the dark period of the second era. Okay, And that's when I said a lot of plots, a lot of revolutions, a lot of corruption. And we will see why. And all that... All that was the consequence of the Battle of Poitiers. Because what happens? They came back defeated. Now, the division huh, of the hearts, the discrimination, huh, the uh, reliance on oneself, the love of the dunya caused or led huh, to the division amongst the people in Al Andalus. So, they became too much divisions within Al Andalus. Okay, within the Andalus. So within the Andalus now, huh, we got regions ruled by different people. Okay, so those Arabs, huh, region, just like look today in the West, huh, this is Arab Masjid, this is Turkish Masjid, there is Bengali Masjid, there is Paki Masjid, huh, Guyani, Trini Masjid, huh, that's what happened. So the Andalus became like that. So one region Arabs, huh, don't interact with the barb. Within the Arabs, huh, same issue. This guy Mudari, this guy Yemeni, serious. This guy Hijazi, huh, this guy Shami. Hmm? So Yemen, Yemeni, huh, they have their own areas. Huh? The Mudariyin, Fehriyin, the Umawiyin, huh? Each group has its own areas and they are as now creating the animosity between those and those. Bani Qais, Bani Sa'idah, huh? all that led to the establishment huh? or the showing, the rising of tyrants to rule them. The rising of tyrants to rule them. One of those, the first one, was Abdul Malik ibn Qatan al Fihri. Abdul Malik ibn Qatan al Fihri. This guy was a tyrant. Hmm? Was a time. Shouldn't they talk about someone come after? Huh? Abdul Rahman al Ghafiqi and al Hajjaj, Uqbam al Hajjaj, huh? This guy is tyrant, oppression. He spread discrimination. Hmm? Because huwa fihri. Okay? So what happens? He, whenever they fight, the ba the booties of war will not be given to the barb. He will not give in to other than al Fihriyin that he belongs to. What's that going to create huh? in the hearts of people? Then after him came Yusuf ibn Abdul Rahman al Fihri. And this man became the leader from 130 until 138, which is the end of this dark period. Okay? But look, one of the, did, one of the things he did he separated Al Andalus from Al Khilaf. Remember, Al Andalus was part of the Khilaf al Umawiyya. In year 132, the Khilaf al Umawiyya collapsed and Al Abbasiyya took over on the blood, huh? by shedding blood. So he separated, he said, Al Andalus is independent of Al Khilaf, Al Abbasiyya. So now it's completely on its own. Wahada by itself is a disaster. Hmm? That's one of the things he did. He dealt with over 30 revolutions in his time. 30 revolutions because of his tyranny. So as we said, this is between 130 and 138. Again, it's 36 years, only 36 years. 
from the time of conquering and Andalus. Only 36 years. Now we're talking about 800 years. Only 36 years. The result, of course, with all these things, with all this fit in, forget about the jihad. Huh? Now we're fighting each other now. There is no pushing enemies and scaring the enemies in France and in Europe. Or in Sahara. Forget about that. We're busy with each other. So what happened? The results. The Muslims lost all the conquered land in France, except Septimania, huh? the French uh, Riviera. Okay? They lost everything else, except that small region, maybe. I mean, looking at the map, it's about maybe 15 to 20 percent of France, after having 70 percent. We have a new kingdom in this region was established. Remember Sahra? This was never conquered. We have a new Christian kingdom now called the Mamlakat Lyon. Okay? You can see Lyon here. But started small here. Okay? Because this was all Islam. So the kingdom of Lyon. Uh, of course the separation uh, by uh, Yusuf bin Abdurrahman Fihri from Khilafah al Abbasiyah. Landerus as I said, started getting divided into region based on race and ethnicity. Zuhur Fikr al-Khawarij Okay? Khawarij is a deviant group that arose within Islam. They were the ones who killed Uthman bin Affan radiallahu One of their mentalities is if you're Muslim and you commit a sin, you're Kafir. Else, you will go to hell and there is no tawbah for you. That's one of their mentalities. So in time, when you have such mentality and such madhab and such uh, mentality within the Muslim community, what happens? Blood shedding right hand. There is no hesitation to kill Muslims. Huh? There is no hesitation to kill Muslims. They killed Uthman. Uthman bin Affan, radiallahu anhu, and bin Nurayn. They killed him. Okay. What's their excuse? Huh? They don't. They're kuffar. They don't rule by the Sharia. They're corrupted. We need to kill them. They're this. These people agree with the ruler who's kafir, so they're kuffar like him. Yeah, he making takfir is so easy for them. Okay. So this madhab huh, uh, showed up in Andalus and in North Africa. It was imported from Shah, from the east. Huh? Came from the east. Huh? And a lot of the barber joined them. Why they joined them? Because they were oppressed by the Fihri, by the, uh, this uh, one of the tribe of the Arabs, the Fihri Yun. They oppressed the barber and the rest of the Arabs. So a lot of the barber joined the Khawarij. So Fita uh, started rising. At that point, uh, Islam went so low in Andalus. The Muslims are divided, fighting each other, huh? groups divided here and there, separated from the Khilaf al Abbasiyah, to the point where huh? you study history, you think that's it. Islam will end here in Andalus. Hmm? 138 Hijri. Only 44 years, huh? or 46 years after. Qarif bin Ziyad put his foot in the end. The Muslims reach of how big we reach and how low we reach. In small period. Less than 50 years. Hmm? So when you see how Palestine been occupied for 50, 60 years, and you say there is no way, or you have no patience, or this 50, 60 years, nothing. That's not to say we accept it. Nah. But we don't lose hope. We still continue to work. We just need to work. We need to show Allah Azza wa Jal that we're making an effort. And not just lectures and speeches and talking and nonsense and negotiating and tables and peace and huh? Oslo. All that. That's not the preparation Allah wants. Okay? So in 50, within 50 years, the whole nation rises and collapses. So at that point, in 138, they thought, Islam is over in Andalus. 
Huh? And then Allah Azza wa Jal get in. Allah Azza wa Jal has his own plan. According to people measures. But Allah Azza wa Jal huh, will say his word. Hmm? Say his word. They have plan and Allah has plan. They have plan, Allah has plan. Yeah, and he using it symbolically, a miracle is needed to bring this whole thing back together. And Allah Azza wa Jal will send you. Okay? And that's what we will start a new era next time, inshallah. And that is Imara al Mawiyya. I will say this, 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 I will say